Chapter 13 of A Lucky Deal by a Self-Made Man This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 13 Silas Hawkins from Avalanche, New Jersey A few days after that, as Jack was coming out of the post office, he was stopped by a sunburned, countrified-looking man who said, Oh, Sonny, can you tell me where Nassau Street is? Sure, come right along with me and I'll steer you into it, replied the boy good-naturedly. But before the countryman could take a step, a dark-featured man dressed in a checkered suit, with a Brazilian sunstone and a gaudy scarf, and a strong odor of the tenderloin about him, stepped up and, grasping the farmer by the hand, exclaimed, "'Why, how do you do, Silas Hawkins? When did you come to town?' "'Well, now, you seem to know me, mister, but I'm gosh darned if I can place you for a cent,' answered Farmer Hawkins in a puzzled way. "'Why, I was down in your neighborhood all last summer. Avalanche, New Jersey, is where you live, isn't it?' "'Well, now, I expect you're right there, mister, but I don't recollect you just the same. My name is Bond, Steve Bond.' Silas Hawkins shook his hand, while Jack Hazard, who stood a few feet away, sized the other stranger up for a confidence man. He was certain of it a moment later when the farmer said, "'Seems you're the second one to stop me since I landed from the ferry boat. The other chap thought he knowed me, too. But when he found out my name was Silas Hawkins, that I lived in Avalanche, New Jersey, why, he apologized and went off. He thought I was Josh Whitcomb from Newark. Ha, ha, ha! You mustn't mind that, Hawkins.' said the man with a crafty smile. We New Yorkers are mighty glad to meet our friends from the country, and we always do the right thing by them. Well, now, you don't say. Say, put in Jack at this point. I'm waiting for you. You want to find Nassau Street, don't you? Never mind, young man. You can run along. I'll take charge of Mr. Hawkins and show him all that's to be seen. The New Jerseyman seemed undecided what to do, seeing which Jack decided to block the sharper's game. Look here he said in a low voice. I'm dead on to you. There's a cop across the street, and if you don't take a glide, I'll run over and give him the tip off. The sharper saw that his game was up. I shan't forget you, young man, and if I ever come across you again, he said angrily as he turned and walked away without another word to the countryman. Well, I reckon he don't know me arter all, remarked Mr. Hawkins, taking a fresh hold on his carpet bag as the man from the tenderloin fainted around the corner of the post office. Still, he seemed to have my name and where I come from, right, Pat? He didn't know you at all. That fellow was a confidence man. And as Silas Hawkins followed him across the street into Ann Street, the boy explained the old threadbare game to him. Well, now, you're right smart, I reckon, to see through that chap at once. I suppose you drink, don't you? A glass of cider would kind of hit me in the right place. And Hawkins paused in front of a saloon. I'll wait for you if you don't linger too long, answered Jack. Ain't you coming in? The boy shook his head. Well, I won't be more in a minute. Jack glanced over a cheap lot of books on a vendor's cart drawn up alongside the narrow walk until Silas Hawkins reappeared. This is Nassau Street, said Jack after they walked a short block. Where'd you want to go? Well, I'll tell you. I want to get to Wall Street, and Dominie Hudson of our town told me if I found Nassau Street, I should walk right into it. He told you right. Come along, I'll take you there. Are you going that way, then? Sure, that's where I work. Sho, you don't say. Maybe you can tell me where I can find some of them dar bulls and bears that folks talk about. You want to visit the stock exchange. I'll get you an admission ticket for my boss. Will you? That's kind of you. Where do you expect to stop while you're in town? Asked Jack, thinking they might direct Mr. Hawkins to a cheap or respectable hotel. Well, I'll tell you. I'm going over to Brooklyn to try and hunt up a niece of mine I hadn't seen since she was married, nigh on to twenty year ago. Her name was Sarah Doonesbury, but she married a Price. She's got a grown-up daughter that works one of them highfalutin writing machines like this. Mr. Hawkins dropped his bag and proceeded to give a comical illustration of how one clicks the keys of a typewriter. Her name isn't Millie Price, is it? exclaimed Jack with some interest. Why, how'd you guess that? That's the gal's name, sure. Would you know her if you saw her? Well, no, seeing as I ain't never seen her in my life. She's a good gal, I've heard, and I've concluded to do something for her and her mother. I've saved a little something since I took the farming, and as I ain't got no one but my niece to leave it to, I've come on to hunt her up. 
You better come to the office with me. Our stenographer is named Millie Price, and perhaps she's your relative. Well, it won't do no harm to see the gal. She can tell her from Oz named Sarah Doonesbury Price, and if she was born down east in the same town I hailed from and such like. So Jack piloted Silas Hawkins into Atherton's office. Then he rushed up to Millie. Was your mother's name Sarah Doonesbury before she married Mr. Price? Yes, replied the girl, opening her eyes very wide indeed. How did you come to find that out, Jack? I met a relative of yours, Silas Hawkins, and brought him here. He's in the reception room. He wants to find where you live. Hadn't you better see him? I've often heard Mother speak of her uncle Silas, but I've never seen him, nor has he ever seen me. Well, Millie, I think it's a good thing to freeze to. As he told me, he's got money and calculates on doing the right thing by you and your mother. If I were you, I'd steer him right over to your home. Mr. Bishop will let you off, I guess. Go out and see him now, and don't ever say I didn't do you a good turn. Millie had no trouble in identifying herself to Mr. Hawkins' satisfaction. She got leave of absence for the rest of the afternoon and took Silas home with her. As Jack had figured, Mr. Hawkins' arrival proved a good thing in the end for both Mrs. Price and her daughter Millie. End of chapter 13